Well, we had Zoom last week. Well done, Alice. Totally surprised that it worked so well. And before that, over the summer, it was great to see some new hosts and have those excellent inspirational talks. Uh, by the way, the talks are up on a YouTube playlist and I think they're going to help us through the autumn, particularly if things are uncertain. If you're down, you can binge watch those guys for motivation and help. This morning, I want to think more about our spiritual formation and point us at the main thrust of the talks this autumn. Uh, whether we get to the hall in a few weeks' time or are still online, we're going to be looking at some foundational stuff that goes a bit deeper. Inspirational is important and so is prophetic preaching and equipping, but everything goes wonky if you don't get the foundations in place. You probably know those New Testament building memes as well as I do. I can't act actually I can't wait to be back together because right now at this point we will be having a breakout session. Um, we'd, uh, we can put WhatsApp up on the screen and you could type in words like building on the rock, house, temple, living stones, cornerstone, plumb line, foundations of course, all of them pointing back to a solid base and forward to making a home for the spirit. Uh, we could uh, do breakouts in a COVID secure way. Uh, but here's the thing, we're coming to, uh, that we want to come to this morning, there's a real danger of us thinking that hearing God's word should be a zero effort activity. Easy listening, smile on face, thought for the day, three minutes on an app, you're done. In the first churches, that certainly wasn't the case. Hearing the word, the first stage in laying great spiritual foundations, the kind that uh, survived the instability we seem to be experiencing uh, every day at the moment, takes energy, it takes determination, and it takes perseverance. As well as Jesus and Paul, the Apostle Peter talked about construction, but he was a family man and he gets to building via talking about babies. You parents get something called a red book, I understand. You keep a record of your child's development. But of course, in Turkey, 30 years after Jesus died and the church started, it was all much more basic. For you have been born again, says Peter, through the living and enduring word of God. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, like newborn babies, be continually thirsty for pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And then from uh, thinking about spiritual formation as receiving mother's milk, he switches over to building. Initially, the Word of God comes to us ideally formulated for a new baby to process. Hypoallergenic, easy to digest. Today, it comes very often in alpha course form, easy to absorb, and it's easy to wish that it was like that forever. Let me ask you, when you were a new Christian, were you thirsty for the Word preached? I hope so, because if you weren't, it would have worried your spiritual midwives. Did uh, the uh, preaching of the word help you grow up into salvation? Hope so. Do you think that you have any more growing up to do? I really hope that's true, because there's miles and miles for us all to go yet. Do you see, see staying deep in the word a critical response in growing up into salvation. I hope you do. Let's go back to the Red Book for a minute. Your new edition gets some tests, a quick one shortly after birth and at one to two weeks, then a big one at nine to 12 months and two to two and a half years. But you don't really need a Red Book to know that something's not quite right if your two-year-old is still on a newborn diet, do you? And whoever wrote the book to the Hebrews could well have been a 21st century health visitor checking out the Red Book entries. He or she, 
It could have been a woman. Uh, we don't know who it was, was writing to a house church somewhere. They'd been Christians a while and it all become a bit dull. Meetings were inspirational. And uh, one of the things it talks about is that people weren't turning up. The writer's frustration erupted. Uh, she wanted to say so much more, but knew that this house church was not like the one Peter had visited where Cornelius was up for the whole package, however much it was and however long it took. She says this before talking about foundations of the faith. This is in chapter five of Hebrews. We have so much to say about this. She was talking about Jesus, the great high priest and the throne of grace. But it is hard to make clear to you because you no longer try to understand. If we are to be formed as followers of Jesus, it does involve mother's milk, easy to swallow, alpha course type preaching. If we're going to grow up into salvation, we need solid food as well. Teaching that means, as Hebrews says, that we have to try to understand. Here's a question. Are you engaged with the word in ways that mean that you have to make an effort or do you expect it to be easy? I was listening to one of my sons and one of my granddaughters talking about breakfast smoothies the other day about the mix of whey and uh, whey powder to spinach. Go figure. And it reminded me of listening to a tragic conversation between a doctor and the son of a patient a few years ago. The, the patient was desperate to eat something that he could taste and chew and roll around his mouth. He wanted solid food, but the doctor was saying quite bluntly, you need to talk to your father. It's a quality of life issue. He can choose to eat, but it could kill him. Eating solid food is a normal adult experience, something that makes life worth living for some people. Can I ask you to try to understand something here? Hebrews says, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Guys, that's the marker. That's the red book entry, teaching others, passing the truth on to others, those who are young in the faith, and those who are not yet Christians. I don't mean everybody has to have a go at doing an online reflection, though that could be inspiring. Over the next few weeks, David is going to be equipping us with some short guidelines for soundbite by soundbite, taking God's word to people who are not yet Christians. Doing that requires deep resources to draw on, not just swallowing some ready blitz mush. Alongside that equipping stream, Mark, who led worship this morning, Richard, myself, hopefully some others, are going to be going deeper into some of the foundations of the faith. Actually, next week, Mark is going to talk about fascination with God. That's a great place to kick off from, because if we aren't excited about God, the unbelievable grace of the Lord Jesus, the indescribable love of the Father, the incomparable friendship of the Holy Spirit, we're not going to have much to draw on in a spiritual conversation for the spirit to bring to mind on the days when it counts. And we're not going to be wonderfully stable when tomorrow's earth tremor comes. Takeaway this week, try blending 1 Peter 2 and Hebrews 5. Pick up some piece of Christian teaching that you've pushed to the side of your plate because it was too difficult to chew. Something that if you digested it could go deep, could help you grow up into the wholeness of salvation. Try to understand, mull it over with the TV off, think about it when you're wide awake. Pray for the spirit to shine a light. Ask somebody who goes deep to help you get it. Practice determination and perseverance. After all, the only thing that doesn't take effort is being a loser. Trying to understand, making an effort to go deeper isn't an effort to earn God's love. It's an action we take in response to God's steadfast commitment to us.